Here you have two cells connected with an external resistor. What is the resistance of R? That's what they're asking you. So how to do R? You cannot combine resistance because it's not asking you to find combined resistance. When you see cells with internal resistance like these guys, you need to think about Kirchhoff's law and loops. But hang on a second. Let's start by reading this part of the question. The reading of the voltmeter is zero volt. Why would it be zero volt? What does the voltmeter measure? If you notice, V is connected between these two points. So it is measuring the terminal potential difference of the first battery. So if you take any battery and then you connect a voltmeter across it, what do you read? Okay, I mean, when it's connected to a circuit, that's what, that's what you read, terminal potential difference. And it's zero. How on earth is it zero? You scratch your head. Because you have EMF, but somehow all the EMF is lost, gone, disappeared. That's one culprit in there. Energy loss, thanks to, not thanks to, that internal resistor right here. So you are going to have lost volts. Okay, this is how I call lost volts. And since your terminal potential difference is zero, that means you lost everything. E. Why is that? Let me write it out for you to see. So what you measure across the battery's terminal is going to be the EMF minus the lost volt, what you lost. So if this is already zero, then <laughs> your lost volts must be E. It's all gone. You have 12 volts, 12 volts is gone, lost, wasted. Battery gets hot. That's the first thing you need to know. Okay, now we can start. How to start? Uh? You, if you're not sure, just do Kirchhoff's law in a loop. So you can pick a loop, something like this. Just go like, woo, just go a loop, come there and come back. And you write out Kirchhoff's law because there's two batteries. So the sum or total EMF equals to all the potential drops. If it's a drop, we give it a positive sign. If it's a rise, we give it a negative sign. If you want to follow this convention right here. Okay, so let's continue. Let's start from this point right here and follow. Since the current is probably going to go in that direction as well. Because all the batteries are pointing there. Ma. Okay, so if I use orange color as my current, it's going to go like this. Okay, so let's start from the blue dot. We go up. A battery, so if we're going out a battery, okay, we give it a positive E. We go up a battery from negative to positive, we give it E again. So E plus E, very nice. The batteries help each other. So what are all the potential drops in the circuit? It's going to be three drops because three resistors and the current through the whole circuit is the same. Current I. So we can just say I time, uh, up times all the resistors, so R1, R2 and R. There will be potential drops across every single resistor. So yeah, we have an equation. Yay! Wait, what are we trying to find? We are trying to find resistance of R. Okay, sure. So let's rearrange 2E. Divide both sides by I equals to R1 plus R2 plus R. And if I rearrange everything to express for R, I'll have 2E over I minus r1 minus r2 yay i found the answer hang on a second wait 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 there's no answer miss how so if you got to this point and you realize none of the answers are, are in the list what do you do well for me if i look at this i would probably cancel this one out i say suspicious i don't think it's zero but if you notice none of the answers have i inside of them current i this we need to get rid of. So we need some other equation to get rid of the I there. But how do we know what equation it is? Mm. Okay, this is a trend trick. Uh, well, the trick that CIE likes to use for this kind of circuits. We know that this is important. Why else would they tell us this? So if I use that and do some Ohm's law here, V equals to IR for the tiny little internal resistor. I should use small r, right? So the potential drop across the resistor, the current times the internal resistance. So the potential drop across that we already know is E because that is the lost volts. You lost everything. 
So E equals to I times R1. So far so good. Hey, I think this will work. Because now we can substitute away I. I is E over R1. Hey, hey, hey. Let's do it. Let's go back to the right side to sub in. Sub in. Okay, so the left side here, I write all the facts. But the working is the main one here on the right. So E, I is 2E divided by what we got for I, E over R1. So I'm going to write it in green to show that it came from there. E over R1. Minus R1 minus R2. Okay. Now let's continue our math journey. E and E are divided. They cancel out. So all we have is 2R1 minus R1 minus R2, which gives us R1 minus R2. That is the answer, which is B for this beautiful question. Okay, so how was that? I know it might be very hard the first time you do it, but as you do past years, you realize that, hey, they like to use this trick a lot. I should probably learn how to do this. So whenever they say terminal potential difference is zero, you will probably have to do this trick here to substitute into your main working, which is doing Kirchhoff's loop. All right, so this is your main working. Hopefully that helped you understand this question a little better and how to deal with equations in circuits. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next question.